So as the topic goes, there are some sort of intersections uh, in the, in my life at the moment. And uh, one of the roads would represent uh, English language teaching or TESOL, uh, as we narrowed it down for, for this presentation. And I'll be talking and not letting you interact for the next 10 minutes so that Andre could stay till the end of it. And the other one is um, art therapy, uh, which is, uh, well, I'm, I have two um, uh, majors, psychology and TESOL. And uh, with the beginning of the uh, full-scale war in Ukraine, I realized I really need to turn into a uh, the other profession uh, that I was working in. And uh, art therapy just seemed very right for that. And uh, art therapy is a huge topic. So you see this flashlight as a symbol of me uh, walking on the path and just seeing a little bit for now. But as I believe we teach who we are, we train who we are, uh, that's... Uh, that little uh, light I have now just helps as much as it can, and then more will be uh, a bit later. So just to get us all on the same page about art like psychotherapy, it's based on art as a very ancient and well-known tool for communication, self-expression, and even healing. Because even if we go to a gallery, for example, to look at masterpieces, we can feel how we feel different and our emotional state can change. And we will not go into therapy as such of in, in this uh, community, but what we are interested in from art therapy is its um, ability to enrich lives of people by active art making and creative, uh, creative expression. So not passive watching, but active doing. So in the ELT, we'll be looking at creative activities and what else this approach can bring. This approach can bring a lot. Just imagine uh, that there are kinds of art therapy and as many of them as there are different kinds of art. And that's a list on the left. There are so many materials that like my inner child is so excited and curious. And this is the picture I took this morning just to give you the evidence how much there is just in my place right now in the process of this learning. And um, the list on the right uh, shows different techniques uh, which we can take as a process for uh, our classrooms. You may be saying that, look, but we already have a lot in our course. And that's true. And uh, the list on the left, just a little reminder to those of us who've worked offline in those days and who are training online now. Um, a lot of ideas are already there and they have artistic elements. And um, as Marbella was sharing in her um, talk last time about UDL and architecture design, uh, giving options and uh, alternatives to learners is a great practice because it invites them and into co-constructing the process. So you can, you can remember, or you have probably uh, done that before, the final learning statement with a lot of different uh, options for people to write an essay, but also to make a poem, a comic story, a picture, a sketch, a slide deck. So this uh, this image is from uh, borrowed from a participant um, fi final learning statement. She made a presentation and she was able to collect my favorite uh, pieces of art, uh, such as little flower with the name, which we can create before even the first icebreaker begins, Cuisiner Roads, and here it's a session we do on uh, connecting, combining frameworks and using course books. Um, this, this octopus is very special, and I, I took this idea from Phil a long time ago in Korea. It's special because it has nine legs, just as many as uh, Rames and Rames uh, framework checklist in our writing module, as you remember. Um, the boat uh, is something that we often do, and for many years I was sure that this boat can only have one way to be put together, but one group of participants showed me that there could be other ways to do that. Uh, the little elephant is another final learning statement from uh, participants explaining how differently they can see the same lesson and how feedback session or reflection session can be helpful. In the middle, you can guess it's a practice teaching team uh, created the timing system for themselves, flashing green for the time to uh, just sweetly wrap up and yellow. Just, you have just three minutes and with red, you just need to shut up and stop. 
So in the future trainings uh, that I envision I could be doing, I'll be using sprinkles of uh, artistic elements and activities. And um, I'll be doing that for the sake of participants or teachers taking the course more than the, their students. Why? Because um, the intensive and um, compressed uh, nature of the short course, which is four weeks and now five weeks online, uh, can be quite tough for people to process. And we know a lot uh, how it can get uh, really tiring and just exhausting, not uh, cognitively, but in other in other ways and even physically. So I think uh, moments or artistic breaks can be helpful for them to refocus, recharge, relax a little bit and um, to kind of get a little bit um, of breathing, of um, living, right? And um, feeling better. So there are different ways uh, and places in the course where it can be done. One of them is the uh, post-teaching feedback with that popular question that uh, they need to answer, how do you feel? Or how did you feel right before the lesson, during the lesson and after? This is something that can be hard to answer verbally, but can be easier to express in a different material. And uh, that's what I'm going to try and practice consistently as a little routine in the course. And a lot of arts uh, elements don't take a lot of time. It's just literally one, two, three, five minutes. So that's like little magic in our repertoire. It could be uh, like the critics in our head may be saying, but what if I am not that creative or what if I'm not creative at all? And I've just brainstormed and sharing a little bit of creativity in the way art therapy understands it. So it's not about artistic product beauty. It's about the way to allow yourself to create. So all the images except for the book are mine. And uh, you can see that I'm not a super um, a professional artist, to put it mildly, mildly. but uh, the uh, scarf in the middle, the two weird images, so that's exactly this scarf. And I did it before the meeting because I'm not someone who loves uh, public speaking, as you may have noticed. But I thought, what if, uh, what if you try to walk the talk? What if you try to do something in two minutes and change the way you feel? So I've created a fish and a tree for those of you who didn't recognize the beautiful arts. Uh, the little doll uh, here is made uh, of just tearing paper, so no scissors were used. That's how she ended up having such short uh, hands, arms. Uh, the picture with the arm, uh, with the palm, is basically for doodling. So that's uh, a simple way to just uh, relax and uh, recharge yourself. You can uh, start from any place and not uh, take the pencil or a pen from the paper and then coloring. And it's just a self-made uh, coloring activity. And the uh, collection of objects in the corner is called uh, My Resources or My Sources of Strength, which uh, I, we, we had a task to collect them from uh, the space at our desk. And that's what I was able to find. And then looking at them again, um, I realized each of them is giving some strength, strength and power to me in a different way. Uh, some of that is self-care, some of that is just joy and lots of pencils, of course, and symbols of uh, being the author of my life with the key, etc. Uh, the book, which is uh, by Julia Cameron, is very well known, but if you haven't read it or read it a long time ago, I highly recommend uh, looking at it. A little bit more. So I'm not offering a list of resources because as I said I wasn't uh, considering um, learning art therapy for the sake of blending it with education but Waldorf School and Rudolf Steiner's um, work is, is one way to look at how this works in pedagogics already and a couple of links for you to explore and these slides will be shared with Eden so you will be able to uh, to take a look. As I said, I'm just in the in the learning uh, process in the liminal space, walking through and uh, noticing more with every week of learning. So the roundabout here suddenly has three roads, not two, and that's because to uh, the English language teaching and art therapy, I've recently added logo theory, uh, logo therapy, and existential analysis course, 
which is my second uh, psychotherapy destination. My goal and dream is to blend them all and to have a new uh, kind of craft for myself. And I hope I'll be updating you about that. So these questions are not for us to discuss now because we're short of time. But if you want, you can take a screen and later for the breakout rooms, they could be part of your conversations. I'll stop sharing. And if you have something burning in the chat, let me know. How did it make you feel? What are your thoughts, initial reactions? And then we'll go into those questions later. And thank you very much for listening. Oh, I'm mute. I just love it. I think every time that art comes up, even if I feel like I have, I'm not a great artist, it always creates new ideas and it, it, it processes information in very different ways. So yeah, I love it. And it's great to see. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mary. And uh, I could see Sally typing in the chat about the simple physical activities. And the big thing is that uh, we are not divided right from our body, from our soul. So a lot of uh, what a lot of things we do in our therapy courses about body work and breathing and um, having like whole selves um, checked in and um, kind of alert and ready. There it is a saying about the feel of color. Yeah, yeah. And how colors can be expressing uh, our emotions, even if we cannot verbalize them yet. It's it's an interesting way to to let it flow. And includes other students. Emeritus is really yeah. It's a big point. And art therapy in the recent years has become a sort of social collaboration and uh, activism approach. And a lot of projects actually the resources there like um, it helps uh, society notice things it helps in education in that way so it's a big area that that's worth exploring and absolutely true louis that it can be done in a virtual classroom like a lot of online courses right now available and um, it's just that if there is a chance to connect in person opt for that but if not yeah the resources uh, installation the small one was done online so and it does offer the kindergarten feel in the sense that it gives that freedom to express and to that safe space we talked about. And that grows into empowering people to be brave at, at their own pace and their own time and sort of respecting their own style. So I think in a way it kind of makes us um, a different kind of teacher offering us to be absolutely present in what's happening and it's not only about teaching, it's about our living, I would say, yeah. And that will be passed on to students. I kind of pushed off students from the beginning of my talk, but that's not, that's not of course, true. Uh, but by helping teachers uh, feel how it goes, we can help the, them um, like communicate it to the students. But to be able to do that with teachers, we need to be um, experiencing it ourselves and firmly believing in it. I think that's the the time of my session uh the section is done thank you for everybody for listening for typing thinking <laughs>